Ciao, ta ciao. Ciao, ta ciao. Hey, brothers and sisters. Hope all is well. We give praise to Ahaya, Shere Ahaya, and our Dono Yache, and our Mother Ruaka Kwadosi. Yes, indeed. We hope you all enjoy this opportunity, learning of the heavenly things that we may partake in the hope of Yache Mishiaka. Uh, we're going to learn about the Lamb's wife, the church, and understand her a bit more, that we may grow closer in the understanding of Allah Hayam. The Lamb's wife, let's start in Revelation chapter 21, verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven veils, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. All right, we know the Lamb is Yache. The bride, the female, was made in the beginning as well. It's so okay, Barnabas, chapter 6, verse 12. For the scripture saith concerning us, how he saith to the Son, Let us make man after our image, and after our likeness, and let them rule over the beasts of the earth, and the fowls of the heaven, and the fishes of the sea. And Ahia said, when he saw the fair creation of us men, increase and multiply and fill the earth, these words refer to the Son. So we see how the Father was speaking to the Son. So that gives us understanding of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Right. And it said, in his image created he them in Genesis, male and female. Right? right? We get some understanding on that male and female. What was going on in the spirit? We saw in the physical realm, Adam was created. Right. And from him was taken the woman, right. the Chihuahua. And we learned about the heavenly family, that the father created the mother from himself. He breathed the breath of life, that spirit of life, the Holy Spirit. And let's look at Second Clement to understand the male and female that was created when Allah spoke to the sons. Second Clement, chapter 14, verse 1 and 2, please. Second Clement, chapter 14, verse 1. Wherefore, brethren, if we do the will of Allah our father, we shall be of the first church, which is spiritual, which was created before the sun and the moon. So she was created in the beginning. So before that physical creation of man, Adam, and Chihuahua, his wife, I mean, there was a creation of this female, the church. Continue. But if we do not the will of Ahia, we shall be of the scripture that saith, My house was made a den of robbers. So therefore, let us choose rather to be of the church of life, that we may be saved. And I do not suppose ye are ignorant that the living church is the body of Messiah. For the scripture saith, Allah made man, male and female. The male is Messiah, right. and the female is the church. Right. <laughs> Continue. And the books and the apostles plainly declare that the church existed not now for the first time, but hath been from the beginning. For she was spiritual, as our Yahche also was spiritual, but was manifested in the last days that he might save us. So Yahche was manifested in the last days that he might save us, and now he's manifesting the church in these last days right. that we may have understanding to understand him and his bride. Hermas was shown in visions that she was created in the beginning too, and the world was made for her. Uh, vision 2. Uh, chapter 4, verse 1, please. Now, brethren, a revelation was made unto me in my sleep by a youth of exceeding fair form, who said to me, Whom thinkest thou the aged woman, from whom thou receivest the book to be? I say, the Sibyl. Thou art wrong, said he. She is not. Who then is she, I say? The church, saith he. I said unto him, Wherefore then is she aged? Because, saith he, she was created before all things. Therefore is she aged, and for her sake the world was framed. So we see she was created before all things, and for her sake the world was framed. Right. Now this is interesting. She being created before all things. Who created all things? Yache, yeah, as Colossians says. Right. And how was she created? She came of him, even as Chua came of Adam, right. and the Holy Spirit came oh, of the Father. Right. Now, we have confirmation of this in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 5 to 7. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 5. For thy maker is thy husband, 
Thy maker is thy husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Ah, yeah, and Sobawata is his name. Ah, yeah, and Sobawata. That's Yache. That's who Psalms 24 is talking about. Continue. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Yache is the Redeemer. He is the Holy One of Israel. Continue. The Alahayim of the whole earth shall he be called. For Ahaya have called thee as a woman forsaken. Ahaya had called thee as a woman forsaken. Why did the church feel forsaken? Continue. And grieved in spirit. And a wife of youth, when thou was refused, saith thy Elohim. So we see how she was forsaken, and we're going to understand why she felt so grieved. Yet, in verse 7, what does Ahaya say? For a small moment have I forsaken thee. Because this life is short. Right. That time with Ahaya Elohim is eternity. Continue. But with great mercies will I gather thee. And we're going to look at Ezra to see how she was grieving. And he was given to understand of how she's going to be gathered back and she's going to be glorious. Let's look at Ezra chapter 10, verse 26 to 28, and then verse 37, and then verse 40 to 52. Right. Right. We're, re we're picking up after Ezra has seen the vision and going to where he's getting the interpretation. Okay. Second Ezra chapter 10, verse 26. And behold, suddenly she made a great cry, very fearful. So that the earth shook at the noise of the woman. To give you the backstory, Ezra has seen a woman there grieving, crying while Zion was destroyed. And he was coming to tell her, stop crying, you know, look at the desolation of Zion. And after that, she cried out, as it says. And what else happened? And I looked, and behold, the woman appeared unto me no more. Mm -hmm. But there was a city built it, and a large place showed itself from the foundation. Then was I afraid, and cried with a loud voice, and said, where are you, Uriel, the angel, who came unto me at the first? <laughs> because he just seen a woman change into a glorious building. Right. Shied it. He's like, what is going on? All right? <laughs> Where's the angel that was speaking with me? <laughs> like, he's scared out of his mind. Continue. For he hath caused me to fall into many trances. Mm -hmm. Showed me many visions. And mine end is turned into corruption. And my prayer to rebuke. Oh, let's jump to verse 37 where the angel comes gives him to understand it. Now therefore I beseech thee that thou wouldst show thy servant of this vision. This therefore is the meaning of the vision we which thou lately sawest. We in verse 40 now. Okay. Yeah. Verse 41. Thou saw the woman mourning, and thou beganest to comfort her. Mm -hmm. But now seest thou the likeness of the woman no more. But there appeared unto thee a city builded, and whereas she told thee of the death of her son, this is the solution. This woman whom thou sawest is Zion. So now we understand who Zion is. Right. Zion is the church. Right. And whereas she said unto thee, even she whom thou seest as a city builded, whereas I say, she said unto thee that she hath been thirty years barren. Those are the thirty years wherein there was no offering made in her. But after thirty years, Solomon built the city and offered offerings, and then bare the barren a son. So we see how what she told Ezra was telling of what had happened in history. And where she told thee that she nourished him with labor, that was the dwelling in Yorochalam. But where she said unto thee that my son coming into his marriage chamber happened to have a fail and died, this was the destruction that came to Yerojalam, and behold, thou sawest her likeness. And because she mourned for her son, thou beginnest to comfort her. And of these things which have chanced, these are to be opened unto thee. For now, Alleluia Ono, seeing that thou art grieved unfeignedly, and sufferest from thy whole heart for her, so hath he showed thee the brightness of her glory and the comeliness of her beauty. And therefore I bade thee remain in the field where no house was builded. For I knew that the height would show this unto thee. So we see now the church is Zion, and she grieves for her children. And we look at what was admonished in the book of Baruch. This is Baruch out of the Apocrypha, chapter 4, verse 8. Ye have forsaken the everlasting Elohim that brought you up. And ye have grieved your child that nursed you. That was interesting. The scripture says that Yahshua is going to be called the everlasting father. Again, you've forgotten the everlasting Allah that brought you up because Yahshua brought us through the wilderness. He was that angel in the cloudy pillar. 
and came down on Mount Sinai and gave us the law. And you have grieved Jerusalem that nurses. So we see how him and the church were working to raise us up, but we have grieved them. And let's look at Baruch chapter 4, verse 6 to 37, to see how we grieve Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem is also Zion. These are names given unto the church. Baruch chapter 4, verse You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved Elohim to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemy. For you provoked him that made you by the sacrifice unto devils, and not to Elohim. You have forgotten the everlasting Elohim that brought you up, and have grieved your Rochalim that nursed you. For when she saw the wrath of Elohim coming upon you, she said, That she, this is the church speaking, this is Zion. Hearken, O ye that dwell about Zion. Elohim hath brought upon me great mourning. And this gives you understanding in Isaiah 54. I was talking about as a woman grieved and things of that nature. Right. Continue. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. With joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow, and forsaken of many, who for the sins of my children are left desolate. Because they departed from the law of Elohim. So we see how we depart from the church. Departing from the law of Elohim. So we see how we need that law to get back connected and stay connected. So we see she's greed because we've gone into captivity for our sins. And she's being made desolate because we went away from the law of Elohim. Continue reading please. They knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments. So we see how it's more than just the Ten Commandments. We have to have the statutes as well. Continue. Nor trod in the paths of discipline in his righteousness. We see how that's the discipline of Allah. That's the obedience of the faith. Continue. Let them that dwell about Zion come. And remember ye the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting hath brought upon them. For he hath brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation, and of a strange language, who neither reverence old men nor pity child. These have carried away the dear beloved children of the widow, and left her that was alone desolate without daughters. But what can I help you? What can she do? Continue. For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. The same one that sent us out is going to bring us back. Go your way, O oh my children. Go your way, for I am left desolate. Right. I have put off the clothing of peace and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. Be of good cheer, O oh my children. Cry unto Ahia, and he will deliver you from the power and hands of the enemy. So we see how powerful prayer is. Continue. For my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you. And joy is coming to me from the Holy One. From the Holy One. <laughs> now we know who that everlasting is that brought us up. That was Yache. Right. Continue. Because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting our Savior. For I sent you out with mourning and weeping. But Allah will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our Allah which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from Allah. Yeah, mother, the church, the bride of Yahche is admonishing us to walk in the fruits of the Spirit. Because we're being afflicted for our sins. Yahche said he has chosen us in the furnace of affliction. Therefore, we have to endure this affliction that we may be purged. As gold is tried in fire, so are acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So we see how we have to endure. Continue. But thine enemy has persecuted thee. Right. But shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto Allah. For ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. Our mother instructs us unto patience in our afflictions and prayer. Let's not forget her admonitions. For as it was your mind to go astray from Elohim, so being returned, seek him ten times more. 
So as bad as we were, apply ten times more effort to walk in all righteousness and be good in all good works. But he that hath brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. Take good heed, O Yorachala. For he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Notice that the angel Uriel said her name was Zion, right? Right. And now we see, he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Yache is her husband. He has the authority to give her a name. Right. He also calls her Yorochalam. Miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoiced at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children served. Miserable is she that received thy sons. For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so she shall be grieved for her own desolation. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting, long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. O Yorochama, look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from Malahim. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One. Say, Yache, gather us, right? Rejoicing in the glory of Elohim. Yache's bride calls unto us and is speaking on his behalf because a righteous wife walks and teaches in the prudence of her husband, even as the Holy Spirit operates in reverence of her husband, as we learned from the last lesson. Even in the heavens, the reverence of a woman's husband is acknowledged by evidence of how the angel of repentance refers to the church. When we look at Hermas, parable 9, chapter 1, verse 1. After I had written down the commandments and parables of the shepherd, the angel of repentance, he came to me and said to me, I wish to show thee all things that the Holy Spirit, which spake with thee in the form of the church, showed unto thee. For that spirit is the son of Elohim. No, they said that spirit is the son of Elohim. She's called the son of Elohim because she's his wife. She's called by his name because he is over the household. So we see how the reverence is even shown when the angels reference her. Now, concerning the church, we had been shown by Clement that the first church was spiritual, and that's who we're hoping to receive by guarding in the flesh now. Right. Even if we don't look at the spiritual church and only look at the flesh of Mishiaka, we still would be guilty if we defile her when we look at Second Clement chapter 14, verse 4. But if we say that the flesh is the church and the spirit is Mishiaka, then he that hath dealt wantonly with the flesh hath dealt wantonly with the church. Right. So no matter how you look at it, to error is still a defiling of the church. Such an one, therefore, shall not partake of the spirit, which is Messiah. So we cannot defile our bodies and expect to be partaking in Messiah Right. And that's how we have admonition to know we must keep the law to keep our temples clean. Right. And we must bear the fruits of the spirit to keep our temples clean from within as well. Please visit the video, What Defiles the Temple, for further edification to ensure we get to partake in the Spirit of Christ. The bride is the tower that we hope to enter into. We read uh, Vision 3, chapter 3, verse 3, and then chapter 8, verse 1 to 8. All right. Shepherd Hermes, Vision 3, chapter 3, verse 3. The tower which thou seest building is myself the church, which was seen of thee both now and afore times. Ask therefore what thou willest concerning the tower, and I will reveal it unto thee, that thou mayest rejoice with the saints. Alright, so the revelations of the church is for our rejoicing. Let's jump to 8 verse 1. 8 verse 1 to 8, please. When then I ceased asking her concerning all these things, she said unto me, Wouldest thou see something else, being very desirous of beholding? I would greatly rejoice that I should see it. She looked upon me and smiled, and she saith to me, Seest thou seven women round the tower? I see them, lady, say I. This tower is supported by them, by commandment of Ahaya. Hear now their employments. The first of them, the woman with the strong hands, is called Faith. 
through her are saved the elect of Elohim. And the second that is girded about and looketh like a man is called continence. She is the daughter of faith. Whosoever then shall follow her becometh happy in his life. But he shall refrain from all evil deeds, believing that if he refrain from every evil desire, he shall inherit eternal life. And the others, lady, who be they? They are daughters one of the other. The name of the one is simplicity, of the next knowledge, of the next godlessness, of the next reverence, of the next love. When then thou shalt do all the works of their mother, thou canst live. I would fain know, lady, I say, what power each of them possesseth. Listen then, saith she, to the powers which they have. Their powers are mastered each by the other, and they follow each other in the order in which they were born. From faith is born continence, from continence, simplicity, from simplicity, godlessness, from godlessness, reverence, from reverence, knowledge, from knowledge, love. The works then are pure and reverent and divine. Whosoever therefore shall serve these women and shall have strength to master their works. And shall have strength to master their works. Strength is needed because it takes time to master these works of these women through endurance as we're being changed from within. Shall have his dwelling in the tower with the saints of Elohim. So we have straight exhortation and admonition how we may have our dwelling. The Holy Spirit and the bride, which is the church, is calling unto us to keep the law. What we didn't know is that the bride is actually hidden in the Holy Spirit, even as Yachi was hidden in the Father. And she is being revealed in these last days. Let's look at the last book, Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, and see what's said there. And the spirit and the bride say. And the spirit and the bride yeah. say. So the bride finally show us <laughs> right there. <laughs> Continue. Come, and let him that heareth say, come. Let him that the thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. It's amazing how you can see the unity of the house of Allah. They're speaking the same thing. We know from the last lesson, the Holy Spirit is speaking according to what the Father told us. And the Father gave it the commandment, and the Son speaks whatever the Father told him. Right. Listen, the bride is the wife of the Son, so whatever she is saying is what the Son told her to say. That's right. And there we see how they're saying the same thing because everyone is following the same doctrine, the same understanding. Right. It's accord. We all they're, agree. Right. Truly in unity. Now, it's interesting that the bride was right there with the mother, hidden in her. By precept, we look at Second Clement chapter 14, verse 3. Now, the church being spiritual was manifested in the flesh of Messiah, thereby showing us that if any of us guard her in the flesh and defile her not, he shall receive her again in the Holy Spirit. He shall receive her again in the Holy Spirit. Right. So when you receive the Holy Spirit... You're actually receiving the church as well because she's hidden in the spirit. Continue. Therefore, when he hath defiled the copy, shall receive the original portion. So there we see, if we defile the copy, which is the flesh we're walking in now, how can we receive the original spirit? Right. We cannot attain unto the spirit if we do not guard this carnal flesh as if we are endeavoring to attain unto the spirit. Because if we don't treat this flesh well, then we're not worthy of the Spirit. Continue. This therefore is what he meaneth, brethren. Guard ye the flesh, that ye may partake in the Spirit. This is why we have to keep our temples holy, because we're guarding the church. Right. Paul understood that she is the flesh of Yacha as well, that we have to guard this flesh in order to partake in the hope of the Spirit and calling of Allah in Yacha. In uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 24. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Messiah in my flesh. In my flesh, because right. the church is the flesh, right? For his body's sake, which is the church. There we see it right. there. And that is, for now, an understanding of the church. Zion, or Seano, and Yorochalam. Right. Or Yorochalayim is different pronunciation. The spiritual. Right.
Anything else? Ah, that's good. Praise him. All right. Jalam. Jalam.